So we landed at the airport here in Boise and uh, I'm here to pick up, I guess actually get picked up in my new truck. So I'm gonna walk outside and see if they're here. All right boys, here she is. And that thing's beautiful. Hell yeah. All right boys, there she is. This is uh, my brand new 2022 Ford F450. So this is a big girl. She is 450 XLT. Uh, it had a flatbed on it its whole life. So literally the bed is brand new, has the radar sensors, backup camera. It's loaded in the back with that thing. Uh, no sliding rear window, but it has backup sensors, black things, black uh, handles. I'm not sure if these power fold and extend, but it has fog lights, which is good. And uh, we are in Boise, Idaho. So see it has the vinyl floor too um actually yeah i don't i don't think it has the power extend but i don't think you really need the power extend and fold these things anymore because they're freaking um it's so wide so uh truck has 154,000 miles on it and as you can see it's got the console not the full console but it's got the stuff and uh we have about a 14, 15 hour drive back to Colorado. So I flew in this morning, grabbed this thing, uh, negotiated the deal uh, just over Marketplace and Messenger, sent them a deposit, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm pretty much just gonna get on the road cause I got a lot of driving to do. I am actually picking up another car in Salt Lake City. Um, and then uh, we're gonna be headed back to, uh, headed back to Colorado and then we're headed straight to Texas. So. Uh, Got a lot of things to do we got a lot of stuff 10 speed in this thing is different i uh, did a little test drive but uh yeah it was kind of an over the road truck so that's why it has the high miles you know 154,000 with only it being a 2022 they were just getting some new trucks in their fleet so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, basically hop off this thing and freaking get on the road all right so i stopped in at mountain home idaho and uh, we got a cart full of goodies i got me a trailer hitch a little reducer adapter, some popcorn chips, some balls of water, a salad, some jerky, some strawberries, and some apples, <laughs> and some magnetic tow lights, and a little bitty tool kit. So I've only driven about probably 50 miles so far, but I need to stop and get some fuel. Hopefully y'all can hear me really good. But uh, yeah, I got a bunch of trip essentials. But man, this truck is just freaking sick. I love looking at it, like, what a unit. Well, my my last truck back in the day, my 7.3, was this this same color, very similar color at least. So let's see, make sure I have the key. But overall, the truck is pretty clean. So this is gonna be my, uh, my snack center. So I always feel lost without my pocket knife, so I just grabbed a $5 pocket knife just, just so I have one. <laughs> The crazy thing is, I feel like I need a knife to open the knife. So I'll probably just give it a nice twist and a pull. Just went ahead and installed the ball in the hitch, make sure I had all the right adapters and all that type of stuff. But yeah, this thing's literally brand new, uh, just because, you know, obviously they had had everything else. I like that it comes with the fifth wheel prep package already and with the gooseneck ball, because I already have one of them balls. And uh, the bed is literally brand new, which is crazy. So um, just gonna grab a little bit of, uh, be on the official road again keep hopping in here because my other truck we did the push button start in it which i don't think i'll be able to get to work in here but uh it's a nice truck though 10 speed's a little bit different to get used to um it just shifts like it's literally like it'll be in fifth gear before we're out of the parking lot and i think a lot of it also has a factor because of the um yeah, look, we're in, we're in third gear right now. <laughs> we're in third gear. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the, the gear ratio of this thing too. So, but truck feels strong, feels super smooth. So the wide track front end, the F four fifties have a wide track front end, obviously heavier duty leaf springs in the back, heavier duty axles, all that stuff. 
and uh, so they're just designed to carry a lot more a lot more weight obviously so a little bit of fuel and a couple hundred thousand miles to go all right so trip in the truck has been going awesome we're getting about 12.8 miles a gallon which isn't terrible but uh, we got the pro clip all hooked up and uh, we're getting ready to stop at my buddy's shop um, he has a couple JDM cars met him at SEMA a couple years ago and we've been friends on Instagram and at SEMA throughout the years uh, so I'm gonna stop by his shop hang out with him for a little bit kind of on a time crunch because we need to Basically, as soon as I get back to Colorado, I'm gonna go straight to bed, wake up in the morning, and then we're heading to Texas for Fuel Fest. So we got some uh, we got some things to do. So I'm gonna stop over here real quick, say hi to him. He just got an R34 GTR from Japan, um, in addition to his other R34 from Japan. So probably hang out with him for maybe an hour, and then uh, and then go pick up this other car. All right, so we stopped at my buddy's shop here. Is uh, should I, do you want me to tell them the name? Yeah, you do. Okay, so uh, Mark and, uh, and Brad, they got a shop here. Well, Mark has the shop here. Brad just like <laughs> puts all of his cars here. You guys work on motorhomes and coaches and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, entertainer coaches and like uh, big luxury motorhomes. So kind of a weird, a weird thing that you wouldn't necessarily think is like a job, but um, when I first met Brad a couple years ago at SEMA and I was talking to his brother, and he was just telling me about, and I met your dad too. Your dad's yeah. freaking cool. <laughs> He's a and, wild uh, man. you know, they're just telling me about how they work on these like freaking big, like Prevost, like tour buses for like, you know, celebrities and all the other stuff, which is, is really cool. And then Brad, obviously, he loves cars, but he just recently got this. So uh, R34 GTR. Obviously, it's white, it's pretty. And uh, it's now your new daily, right? Yeah. So I bought it in 2020 during the pandemic, and uh, it wasn't legal until February of this year. So in February, we we're finally able to import it over. And that's, uh, it's quiet. It's like got stock turbos on it. I don't have anything with stock turbos on it. And uh, I'm just really excited to kind of drive a car how it was meant to be driven. And uh, eventually it'll get some mods, but I love that it blows cold on the AC. Yeah, blow <laughs> ice cold AC. Yeah. So Brad, he's kind of unique too, because he's he has a Midnight Purple R34 GTR that he's been like, he drives that around. He has an R33 white GTR V-Spec, which is pretty much, I mean, obviously a really pretty version of mine, but he's been like daily driving that over the past couple of years. They have a 351 swapped uh, Fox body drift car, which actually used to be a Utah uh, highway patrol car, which that's yours. Yes. Yep. So you guys have been yeah. building that, drifting that thing and kind of playing with it over the past couple months. I've been following him on Instagram. Um, Brad was also on the show Banging Gears uh, as well. He was on, I think the, he was one of the first people to go and film, right? We were the second... We were the second group in. Mm -hmm. So, and then I think we're actually the second episode, this, whatever the second episode is supposed to be. And we still don't know when mm -hmm. that's, that's coming, coming out, out, but eventually it's coming out. That's coming out. This one is called Jeff. The 33 is sweet. It's just funny that he's just been like daily driving that the past couple of years. And now you just instantly replaced it with a 34. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, that poor thing's up on the lift, never to be driven ever again. Yeah, it, it needs some love though, because. I've been beating on it for since I bought it. It's, well, maybe now it's time to, you know, kind of upgrade it a little bit. And then obviously this was the car that was at SEMA, getting a couple little things kind of finished up with out. it. So yeah, it needs it needs to be sorted a little bit, but it's gonna be a it's gonna be a world beater as soon as it gets done. Yeah, no, I'm I'm excited to see that. Uh you also have another fox body over there in the corner. Yep. Just a bunch of cool projects and a bunch of things in this freaking huge shop, which is meant for these things. Yes. And uh we're just taking it up with with all the car stuff, which is really cool. But I don't have a whole lot of time. I have another car to pick up, but Brad, he threw me the key. He's like, hey, go go drive the R34. Go so go, go beat on I'm, not, I'm not gonna say no to that, because yeah. I've never, uh, the only- is This is your first R34? Yeah. I think this is the one I, to do, because it's just so stock. It's so fun. So I rode in Adams when his was when he first got it, like oh. when he revealed it mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. But like we drove around the block and it was like kind of breaking up a little oh, bit. Yeah. And I haven't been in one since. I drove my R33 into the shop before they pulled the engine, <laughs> and then the 32 was really the only like RB26 all-wheel drive chassis. Well, like, so just you know, I've put you know 20,000 kilometers on that car, 5,000 kilometers on my 34, and you know, a thousand kilometers on this, but this car is, I think it's perfect. Like it just rides so well. 
each each generation. Like the 32 is a bit more of a it's a bit more race car. 33 is a bit more refined, and the 34 is like you see. I'm really excited for you to drive it for the first time. Like, yeah. I've got goosebumps right now for some reason. Oh, that's good. I'm just excited. <laughs> like honestly, I, I only get to see like once a year. That's good. no, I know. Normally it's the same. Well, I'm gonna go grab a GoPro. Uh, and we'll see what this thing's about. I frick, I'm stoked. I can't believe he's letting me drive it, but it's freaking beautiful. But anyways, uh, my buddy Trevor from Colorado hey. stopped by. Oh man, I'm excited. This is the best part. The blue underglow yeah. from Japan. <laughs> Wow, this is pretty. Yeah. I like all the gauges. So, uh, that, there you go, you got it. Yeah, the gauges are sick. It's weird, he's got the windows down, or up, because the AC. <laughs> the AC rips in this car. We just refilled it, so it's like, it's funny, buses take 26 pounds of refrigerant. Yeah. And this takes like five ounce, like 2.5 ounces or something. Just some. Who's like so used to, uh, filling up a huge system. You're like, oh, up we're done. It is quiet. So quiet. And smooth. Yeah, it feels like a brand new car. It's been a while since I drove driven right-hand drive. Well, since we did the R34, R32 giveaway, yeah. that was the last time. That's what's yeah. that's what's really cool. Yeah, that feels good. It's great, right? It's smooth. Like <laughs> out of like that's how you would have expected this to be, like if you would have bought it back in the day. Yeah, yeah, and like exactly. this is an R34, not like some crazy thing that it wasn't that it wasn't, it is just what it is, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's so perfect. Like light little mods and six speed's nice. Yeah, the clutch feels really nice. Yeah, just the noise that it makes Dude, how good is, is that? just good. Yeah, like the, <laughs> it just screaming up to 8,000, like that's nice. And I'm like being nice to it. Like I can't yeah, imagine yeah. if you were like, if this thing was on a road course and you were wringing its neck, yeah. like how much fun that would be to like hear it. Yeah, I want, just, him, I want him to autocross it really bad or just do like a track day. Yeah. Oh, it'd be a blast. And then like, I feel like these cars are at that point now where nobody's driving them either. Yeah, They're like exactly. afraid to drive them. And like I was asking him about rock chips and he's like, oh, if we'll just fix it. You yeah. know, like it's not that big of a deal. After having the midnight purple car, that's so stressful to drive. Yeah, we feel like this one's guilt-free. Yeah. Like, yeah, it just doesn't. Like, we can drive this one and beat on it as much as we want because we we already have the one that we need to preserve. Like, let's just yeah, let's hammer on this one. And does that one make pretty good power? Yeah, it's like five hundred. Yeah, and it has a big single. With, so it's it's a whole different experience. Yeah, it's completely yeah. different, but both very quiet. Like. That one isn't loud until the waste gates open. Yeah. Yeah, this is like the perfect daily drive car. I would love to daily drive an R34 <laughs> GTR, you know? But luckily, nothing happened. I was like, I dodged it. Fast and Furious style. It's so good. <laughs> like it just drives yeah. so smooth and then the AC and like 
it's got enough noise can maybe be like a little bit louder, yeah. but like it's just like when you're ripping it, it just feels so yeah. nice. So I like that you can hear the turbos a lot. Yeah. Like. Yeah, the wine is perfect. Oh, I should it's give. Full boost. I should give that back yeah. to you. It's in full boost immediately. Yeah. It pulls so good all the way to red line, like all the way to eight thousand. Until you hit third gear, and third gear, it's like ah, stock turbos. <laughs> yeah. No, it feels solid though. Like. Yeah. It, I was telling him it's just nice to like experience what it's kind of supposed to be instead of just this belligerent exactly. thing that you're actually not supposed to drive or you're not even willing to drive anymore. Yeah. Now it's like something that's actually enjoyable. You drive it around, you put smiles on people's yeah. faces because like nobody probably expects to see this yeah. thing driving it's around. This. Like it's always that. Yeah. Like, I think the reaction is bigger to this one than it is to the purple I, yeah. For sure, for sure. Unless it's like somebody who knows. I just think because it's so bright, mm -hmm. you know. Pe pe yeah, the the white stands out. Whereas yeah. the midnight purple kind of hides a little bit. It almost just looks like a, you know, a Maxima's cruising up in your, yeah, exactly. in, your exactly. in your rear view. Whereas you see this thing, you're like, no. Yeah, and the white on white is so good. Mm -hmm. You kind of make me want to go white on white with my 33. You should. Yeah, you should. You should. Hey, if you guys like this content, my <laughs> Instagram is or my it's the Rival Garage on YouTube. Uh, come check it out. We're about to drop a whole bunch of videos on this car. Um, nothing crazy yet, but we'll eventually get crazy. And then he also is uh, Rival GTR on Instagram as well. So yeah. I'll be sure to put your uh, links in the description, but I really appreciate you yeah. uh, showing Give me around. High five. See you later. Yeah, yeah, anytime. Please come back and uh, this summer, you should come out to an event and I should go out to an event. We'll do that. Yeah. We'll do so, that, yeah. Yeah, drive either my Fox car or we'll have the Barra car in like a couple months or bring your car or bring one of your drift cars i'll down. probably bring one of mine yeah, yeah. i think because i think down to earth they did an event out here mm -hmm. in at utah and yeah. then i think there's some other stuff but yeah it's not that far now that yeah. i've like driven it now yeah. that we got a big old new 450 yeah, 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 yeah. you know we can haul two cars out we could do that we yeah. could do the thing so yeah and yeah. i've got um i've got an r35 that is right around the thousand horsepower mark so i need to come down and do a drag strip down there because we don't have one in utah yeah i have a buddy who lives here too and he's the same thing he has he lived in texas had a drag race mustang mm -hmm. and then literally moved to utah and he moved to utah and then no drag strip yeah i appreciate brad and uh and mark for showing me around so it was awesome and uh you guys need to come out to colorado we will. too yeah, is what will. it is yeah i want to come i want to come drive one of the events out there uh our friend derek dr drives out there a bunch so i need to come and drift with an event with you guys yeah for sure well slush is coming up in may 25th or 20 something yeah that might be a good that one happen, that'd be sick i'll so. see what the schedule what the, what's on the schedule and so we don't have any drift events here so many so broken work. down bands are are here and you know need, need yep, you to yep. help you fix their stuff but uh we'll call I gotta get running. I gotta go pick up this other car, which is you guys are gonna be surprised, but it's similar. It's not similar. They were maybe they were brothers in Japan. <laughs> maybe they were parked in the same parking lot at one time. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> could have been. Could have been. All right. Well, back on the road. <laughs> all right. So this is the next purchase. Um, obviously, two vehicles, one guy doesn't really work that well. So we are uh, hooking up a tow bar to this factory little hitch right here. It's a little complicated because we had to, you know, snake some bolts in there from the side, but a good magnet and uh, some tools worked out good. So I'm going to get this thing hooked up and then we'll talk about it a little bit more once we get uh, kind of back to the shop. But I just wanted to show you guys the process of what we're doing here with the Walmart tow bar. It's how you get cars home. Yeah. All right. So we got the in tow sticker. We got it all hooked up here in the front. Everything's all tight, tightened down hooked up to this thing so it honestly doesn't look too bad so decent little car so we'll just get on the road and see how it does all right boys so there is a chaser that is just telling me i guess i need to figure out where i'm at all right boys well we are on we are on the way we have the chaser hooked up with the freaking tow bar and it it feels fine i pulled a u-turn in the middle of a, a street using utilizing the f-450s like wide track turning radius this thing will literally do a u-turn in the middle of a sh like a residential street it is crazy um but uh tow bar and everything seems all right we're just we're just we're just doing it i don't know what else to do other than we're just cruising so um that's it stop by my buddy uh, mustang's house real quick um sean you guys probably haven't seen him in a while i haven't seen him in a while so um we're gonna stop by his house say hello to him and his family 
and then just get on the road. But we have a, I think, 10 hour drive. Which basically, I'm leaving town right now. It's 7.45 p.m. That means we're gonna be, I think that's, that's like six in the morning in Colorado if I don't stop which I'm probably gonna stop for at least two or three hours and just take a nap at a truck stop or something like that because there's no way I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> that I'm gonna try to do that whole drive. It's, I know I'm gonna get the, the long blink and I, I definitely don't wanna take too long of a blink. Figured I'd give you guys a little bit more of an outside shot of the rig, but everything seems to be uh, going good, holding up good, it tows just fine. I hit a really big bump and I mean, it's, it's all there. The bolts are in there. They're, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say other than it's on there and it works. And we got the bolts and the nuts and the washers. And so here we are, boys. How cool is that? Oh, yeah. And I feel like we're right, we are right outside of Salt Lake, but it feels like we're a mile, like we're, it's just crazy. I feel like we're like out here alone. We are about three hours from home. Um, I, on basically, it's been 10 hours since I picked this up or the drive was supposed to be 10, 11 hours or so. Uh, I stopped and slept for like an hour and a half at a truck stop just to feel a little bit better. It's like, five something in the morning right now, five or, I don't even know. I don't even know what time it is, but I'm freaking tired. We had a sketchy little thing. So we're on highway 287, basically coming from Laramie into Fort Collins. And it's, it's like this, which is just, you know, it's like hazy, but on the top of the pass, it's 24 degrees and it was wet. And as you can see, my truck has ice on it. So that means that the freaking road had ice on it. So I was just like cruising up, obviously had it in two wheel drive because I wasn't expecting any ice. I also had my Apple CarPlay on so it didn't show like the temperature outside. So it started spinning and just kind of like wiggling, like going up the pass. It's like, oh no. And the hubs, I, you know, I kind of got it as slow as I could, clicked it in four wheel drive, but the hubs weren't locked in. They have the auto hubs, but uh, anyhow, pulled over on the side of the road, locked them in, crept up, slowly got going. As soon as we got to the top of the pass, or as soon as I got to the top of the pass, there was like, 10 semi trucks stuck there like just sitting like on the hill and then like an f-350 with a trailer and then i feel bad for like all of these cars that are going up there right now because they're just going to run into ice and it's crazy because you know as i was going up the hill there was a guy coming down with his hazards on i was like ah that's kind of weird you know and i'm just cruising like kind of normal and then as i'm going down with my hazards on you see everybody just ripping up and i'm like man i wish i could wish i could tell them um it's gonna be freaking icy up there, but I just took it really slow. I was doing like 20 miles an hour and you know, just basically crawling. Um, so I just needed to, needed to pull over again and um, you know, just kind of rest myself for a minute. So I figured I'd give you guys a quick little update, but yeah, truck's doing great. Everything's doing good. Um, we survived that, so that's good. I freaking, this thing just looks so tough. I just love it. Like the 450, the 350s are cool. But the 450 has the extra wide fender in the front with the extra wide axle. So you can see the, the front axle is like almost as wide as the rear axle. So it's, uh, it's pretty serious. And I also realized this truck has the auto high beams too. But I kind of want to eat something because I haven't ate anything. But well, I've just been snacking on stuff. But, uh, rest here for a minute and we'll get going. All right, so the one issue with the truck is the exhaust brake. It makes a screeching sound, which kind of points towards a cracked exhaust manifold um, stud. All right, so 41 gallons, and we almost got almost 600 miles on this tank. 564. And out of that, three hours of it was idling with me taking a nap. So, um, yeah, we're close to home now. Eric, what do you think? This. You like the TL? The ultimate TL, yeah. It's kind of light. It looks just like a TL. My hood, yeah. 
That's it. Yeah, it's got the faded hood and everything. It's just it's the awesome. Eric. It's the Eric special. So hey, uh, the tow bar works. Was it great? It's fine. I didn't. I didn't even know it was back there. <laughs> like, so, like literally, sometimes I was like, "Is this still back there?" Because you can't see it. You could see like the top of the roof, like in the yeah. in the back. But other than that, it's it's not bad. But sweet. It's an interesting. It's really slow. <laughs> it's like really, really slow. But uh, <laughs> did you do that? What the? So. Yeah, I did. It. Some of it stayed, but some of it didn't. But. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it made it, it made it the whole way. Nice. So saved me, saved me some coin. That was a long trip. Was it? Like literally we, I landed in Boise yesterday at 10 and it's 10 o'clock right now. So yeah. it's 24 hours start to finish. And I've only, you feel like... <laughs> I only it. slept like maybe two hours total. I did like an hour and a half last night somewhere. And then I did like 20 minutes this morning, like Dang. on the side of the road. But what do you think of this unit? This is, this is the unit. Isn't it? Yeah. Like that is, that's it right there. That's freaking big old girl. All right, so we should be getting ready to go to Fuel Fest, but decided I wanted to take the chaser for a little bit of a drive down the street and uh, give Eric the full experience. What do you think about this, this thing? This thing is so cool. I'm making my like, stomach like, hurt. They are freaking cool cars. It's, I, it really needs a turbo. <laughs> Got a backup noise. <laughs> nice. Uh, it kind of sounds cool. Yeah. than the Forester. What would win in the race between the Forester and the... Definitely this. You think? Yeah. The Forester is slow. Should we do another pull? Yeah. Just like turbo this engine with a couple pounds of boost and FMU, that or just that put a, sweet. put the one J EC like a turbo ECU on it. Right, this right. thing being on motor and like bulletproof, probably. How the brakes? Good brakes. Reasonable brakes. Good. Well, it has an IS300 brake kit on it. Is that a nice one? Bigger? Well, so Chaser is over, there's nothing really in the United States that cross references, like brake parts. Oh. So the, kind of the only way to like get them to work or whatever is to pretty much just get a, um, like everything out of an IS300. So it has like an IS300, I think knuckles and like, stuff like that so it's got like is 300 that then it has is 300 i thought it died but it's just idling look at it it's idling solo 
That's interesting. Whatever. Cool. Now what? Now what do we do with it? Now that we have this information, we'll stick. Turbo. It would be kind of cool to turbo. Let's pop the hood and look at it. See how custom it is. Are you locked? It's super weird being on this side. The interior is really clean. The chassis is really clean. Like the underneath it doesn't have any rust. It gets really nice under there. The paint's a little bit, you know, mid, but hey, you know, we know it, guys. It's very. I think they have like tiny rods, like the two JZ GT, two JZ GEs that are in like the IS 300s over here. They're good engines, but they they have really tiny rods. So if you turbo them, they don't like it. And I think it's the exact same thing with this. So if you turbo these, they don't like them. But like, I feel like we could just plug in the everything off of a like a JZX 100 turbo ECU and put a turbo on it with like low boost and just see what it does. It might be alright. Might be all right. All right, boys. So F450 is in the shop. I've uh, I've already been like running around it with a little polisher, like cleaning up some of the paint stuff, like right here, and especially like right here. These guys, they were really, really scratched right there from like I don't know if it was car washes or whatever, but kind of polished those things up a little bit. I uh, I just couldn't help myself just looking at it. I just I needed to play with it a little bit. Yeah, you can probably see like, oh yeah. Look at that. This side I haven't touched, but they almost look gray. So already kind of playing with it a little bit, but uh, overall I'm just freaking really stoked on this truck. Did great on the, the drive home. It was basically 13, 14 hours of driving, and uh, I can't wait to do some other modifications. Obviously I have a ton of things in my head. I've thought about like painting the wheels black. I think that would be cool. I want to do the LED headlights, paint match bumper, change the grill to either paint match this one or get like the Lariat Sport grill. Uh, obviously switch over the full interior. I want to switch the whole 22 Lariat interior out of my truck into here. It should plug in and work properly this time. It also has a vinyl floor, which I'm not sure if I like or not, but I think I would prefer to just go with the carpet. I think it kind of keeps the interior a little bit quieter, kind of feels a little bit more like home. You know, when you like go to a house and you have nice soft carpet versus like a hardwood floor, like I'm not really dirty with the trucks. I don't really like treat them super bad. It's crazy because I'll like take the vinyl out and then I'll put carpet in there and then I'll put like some WeatherTech floor mats or the Husky liners or whatever in it to just cover them up. But uh, yeah, I love the lights, you know, the cab lights. It's just such a big, huge freaking truck. I know right here looking at it, you guys could just tell how crazy it is. Um, it already has the fifth wheel prep package in the back, which is nice. And then as you can tell, the bed has literally never had anything in it. So I've been looking at spraying liners or dropping liners and stuff before I really start kind of working this thing. Uh, paint match rear bumper. Overall though, I'm just freaking stoked. Uh, the chaser, we got it all uh, all unloaded. Drove it down the street. Um, I'm gonna let Eric drive this thing. I think it'll be kind of funny to see his reaction to it. But as you could tell in the engine bay, we have a uh, just a NA 2JZ. NA this is a NA 1JZ VBTI, and I think the exhaust manifolds are the same off of the 2J GE VBTI. So I think Artec actually makes a manifold. But the rods in these things are super, super tiny. I'm talking pencil thin uh, rods. So these things, if we turboed it on the stock rods, it, it probably wouldn't be uh, too happy. But obviously the plan with this thing is to eventually turbo it or do a 1J GTE swap, a body kit and uh, all that stuff. I've just, ever since I went to Japan way back in the day, I've always wanted a chaser. I've wanted to experience one, drive one and uh, have a lot of fun with it. So I think uh, this is probably going to be the car to kind of play with for a little while and have a, have a bit of fun. So uh, we got a lot of projects going on in the shop and uh, pretty much haven't really been filming youtube videos just because we've just been doing so much other stuff that doesn't involve youtube you know buying and selling and you know stuff like that um so uh sorry for the lack of updates here i just kind of stopped filming but uh we're gonna hop on here a little bit more and start filming some more vlogs for you guys um we just went down to texas uh i just brought the fd to the shop because we're gonna clean this up and get it ready to sell um but there's probably gonna be another video about this thing in the future and then we got to do some maintenance stuff on this because we are going to the Slush Motorsports um, Festival in 
Arizona this next week. Stoked for that. We got a lot of things going on in the shop. I'm trying to decide on my truck on exactly what to do with it, but we got the white six liter. Uh, the transmission has a little bit of a, a leak on it, but this thing is pretty much ready to go and ready for sale. Other than basically just changing out the uh, tranny pan gasket. Should be good to go. So lots of little updates, lots of stuff. If you guys are stoked on that 450, I'm really stoked on it. And hey, what do you think of that truck? She doesn't know what to think. But uh, anyhow, we'll talk about some of this stuff. It actually made more financial sense to get this truck because I'm essentially getting a loan for 100% of the value of this truck and then selling my truck and using some of that money. But it makes more sense to finance this and use the money for some other stuff for the business. So that's kind of... Uh, that's kind of the plan moving forward, but appreciate you guys watching this video. 